Hello everyone, welcome to another video by Jeepa.com. I am Rajdeep Ghosh. Today's video will be an introduction to graph theory. What are graphs and why do we care? There will be some notation involved and some notions given and some ideas. There is obviously a relevant problem which is the famous handshaking lemma. What is it? Uh, what is the problem? What are the implications? We'll all come to it. There is obviously a challenge problem for the videos at the end. Uh, the incentive for the best comments, and this includes uh, a mention in the next video. And so the, uh, so the best comments means just comments in general, good questions or uh, insights or feedback or good solutions to the challenge problem. You get a mention in the next video. The best responders in a month will be considered for the Ramanujan Scholarship at Chinta.com. To read more about the Ramanujan Scholarship, feel free to pause here and read about it. The problem that we'll be discussing today is what is called the handshake. Lemma. I'll rephrase this in not in terms of graphs because I don't really know if you know any graph theory. I'll rephrase this in a different way. And that will actually highlight one big aspect of graph theory, which is how applicable it is to modern world. Not just modern world, in general, it has a lot of real world applications and implications. So the problem is that um, some gentlemen go to a party go to a party some pairs of these gentlemen some pairs of these gentlemen shake hands with each other not all necessarily some shake hands with each other a handshake is considered a mutual so if a shakes b's hand then B will consider their hand shaken by A and A will consider their hand shaken by B. A handshake is being considered mutual. It's a stupid detail, but you'll see why it's uh, why it's somewhat important. It's considered mutual. Prove that the number of gentlemen who shake hands. with an even number of people, sorry, with an odd number of people, are even in number. So for the novice, this might actually seem like a very surprising result. We give no data, there is no structure to work with, and we actually have a strange result. It seems almost, imp not maybe not impossible, but just very strange. Like, why should the end of this True, we don't have anything to work with. We don't have how many pairs shake hands or any of that. We just know that some, some handshakes happen. But well, this is the problem. And we'll eventually get around to proving this. I'm going to take a few moments to talk about what graph theory is. Graph theory is the theory of objects that are we call graphs. Now, what is a graph? You usually write it as a G. V is a set of points, say 1, 2, 3, 4, A1, A2, A3, whatever you choose to call it. And we usually depict this as points in space. So this is what the set of vertices looks like. We call this the set of vertices. An edge is usually considered as a pair of it. Depending on the context, it could be an unordered or an ordered pair of vertices. In the real world, it just looks like an edge between two points, a line between two points. So this is an edge, and this is an edge, this is an edge. This is what a graph is. A graph is technically the two tuple or the pair V comma E, where E is actually part of V cross V. It's a pair, it's the set, it's a, a subset of, it's a, E is a subset of V cross V. Pairs of vertices, V, I, V, G. V1, V2, V3. So, well, this, this uh, in set notation will look like v1, v2, v3, 4, comma, and the uh, set of edges will be v1, v2, v2, v3, v3, v4, and so on. And we have a lot of free room in what we call, what edges can be, and so on. 
But this might seem like a strange thing to just define out of thin air. But think about in what cases can you uh, debate situations like. It's a very general structure that if you have a set of objects, if you just have a set objects, just collection of things, and two things are related in in a very non in a very uh, direct manner. That uh, we can we, there's a very concrete definition of what it means for two points to be related. For example, in the problem that we saw in the hand shaking them up setup, the gentleman, the set of gentlemen can be thought of as only vertices, and a handshake can be thought of as an edge. Do you see where I'm trying to go with this? Maybe, maybe your setup is different. Uh, maybe you just have a set, and you choose to color the set, and number and numbers. I mean, elements of the set which are the same color, you join them by an edge. There just has to be some sort of a relation between two points, and that is as general as the setup is. We can write, and any any setup like that can be thought of as a graph. For example, I don't know how many of you remember the problem for RME. 2019 with the P6, we had a set of numbers. Had a set of numbers. It has it had a certain size, and uh, we were we were trying to talk about how some pairs were co-prime. This is the A B equals one, and we also had the how many pairs of these numbers were co-prime. We had this data. We had to show that we could find A B C D element of the set. So that they are all mutually co-prime. Do you see how we could represent this as a graph? We could have sort, we could represent these points as, you know, vertices. We could represent these elements as vertices, elements of the set, and the quality of being co-prime could be represent, uh, represented as an edge. So it's a very ubiquitous setup. We have some notation here, and uh, to be fair, the only reason this is as almost like a selfish reason. The only reason I am even defining these things, uh, they don't have that much of theoretical data here. I mean, um, I'm re defining this because eventually when we talk about topics in combinatorics, knowing some basic graph theoretic definition really helps us go a long way. So the next uh, definition we'll make is the degree of a vertex. A degree of a vertex. Given a graph and a vertex in that graph, you have some V element of a vertex set in the graph. We say the degree V is the number of vertices edge connected. We say, or we also say adjacent to mean edge connected. We say adjacent to mean that two points are connected by an edge. Adjacent to the given vertex, to the vertex. So in the example that we took here, the degree of V2 is 3 because 1, 2, 3. The degree of V1 is 1. The degree of V3 is 2. The degree of V4 is 2. We could also have an isolated edge. V5, the degree is 0, and so on. This is what the degree of a vertex means. We also have some other, right, uh, other notions. We have the notion of uh, a walk. A walk in a graph is just a sequence v1, v2, dot, 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 some vn. A walk is just, and there is no restriction on what these vertices can be. They can, they don't need to be distinct, and the edges that appear between these two vertices, they also don't need to be distinct. So, for example, in our example graph, um, the, the sequence v1, v2, again, back to v1, back to v2, v3, v4, v2 could be considered a walk. So v1, v2, v1, v2, v3, v4, v2. This is what we, this is this is a fine example of a walk. A path, on the other hand, a path, on the other hand, is a walk, walk, walk without repeated, without repeated vertices. The vertices cannot repeat. So, for example, the example that we took here was actually not a path. On the other hand, v1, v2, v3 can be a path. Or v1, v2, v3, v4 is a path. But v1, v2, v3, v4, v2, not a path. 
a cycle is well kind of a path a path but the starting and the ending edges are the same so you could say well that doesn't qualify as a path it's all right it's call it a walk without repeated vertices except the last and the first vertex so a cycle is exactly what you would expect to be we start at v2 go to v3 go to v4 go to and then go back to so it's quite clear what a what a cycle is it's quite obvious um path with first and last vertex We call a graph, we call G to be connected if there is a path, if there is a path between any two vertices. Vertices. Again, coming back to the example that we were working with. If we were to ignore V5 for a second, this is a connected graph. Why? You take any two points, there is a path. It's quite obvious what a connected graph is actually. You can look at a graph and call it connected. However, if we actually do add the V5, now it's no longer connected. There is no path between V5 and say V3. No path. This is no longer connected. We call a connected graph graph without a cycle a tree. A tree. You could all, this is a, it's a very good question to ask why why are we assigning all these things? This is mostly just for future problems that we'll be doing. So for example, this is no longer a tree. We won't call this a tree because it actually has a three cycle. Again, do we consider an edge as a two cycle or just a vertex as a one cycle? No. A cycle by definition has length greater than equal to three or to three. For but however, this This qualifies as a tree. This is a tree. It may not look like one, but this is indeed a tree. And there is an, there is a, the idea of rooting a tree where you start with an edge, start, start, start with a vertex, look at its, what we call children. So we say you start with this, we call this two. So one, two, two has two children, three and four, three and four. Is childless. This is all technical notation, by the way. This is an, I'm not making this up. This is all completely real. And four has one child, five. Suddenly, now this looks like a tree. And the thing is, by definition, we can actually keep doing this. This, the idea of rooting a tree is actually completely fine. We can root a tree. So why we can do that? We'll come to that later. The proof is not too hard. So we set up a lot of not notation. We won't need all of this for the handshaking lemma. Let's just go ahead and prove the handshaking lemma. Here's a claim. The net degree sum is always zero. In fact, it's twice the number of edges. If if in a graph G, the number of edges, the size of M, the number of edges is M, the, the, the degree sum, the net degree sum over every single vertex is actually 2M. Now, why should this be true? This is actually not too hard to prove. Let's take an example of a graph. Let's take this. The degree, every time you count a degree, you are actually just counting an edge. The thing is, say, so for V1, say this is V1, this is V2, this is V3, this is V4. When you count the degree of 1, you are actually counting this edge. Thing is, this edge also gets counted once more when you count the degree of V2. So for in, so the edge V1, V2 is counted twice. This is true for every single edge that occurs in this in the calculation of this degree sum. So the, is it, so I hope it's clear what I mean. When we take a, a sum over we take a sum of degrees over every single vertex, every single edge is counted exactly twice, once for each of its endpoints. And so this is actually quite obvious. This holds right away. So the handshaking lemma is a direct corollary of this. Note that note how in the setup that we created with the handshaking uh, for the handshaking lemma, if we write the gentleman as vertices and we connect two vertices if the gentleman sh shook their hands, then suddenly this becomes a graph theoretic setup. The number of gentlemen who shake hands with an odd number of people. So the number of vertices in this graph 
with an odd degree. So, in, so what the question is actually asking is that in a graph G, you, we are completely abandoning Benjamin and Hampshire. In a graph G, the number of vertices with an odd degree are even. And again, this is immediately true. Y are even, is equal to even. Why? Because say you now do this, V element of V and degree V is odd. We look at this and we look at degree V is even. We look at all the vertices with an even degree. We look at all the vertices uh, with an odd degree. V element of V, degree. We know that this is actually even. We don't need to write vertices, we just know that they're even. So this is, and clearly since uh, here all the degrees are even, this term is actually even. You take this to this side, so you have an even minus even, which is even. So what you have is you add a bunch of odd numbers and you get an even number. Clearly the number, the number of odd numbers you're adding is actually even. Otherwise, if it was odd, then this would be odd. So this, there's, uh, there's an odd number, there's an even number of vertices with an odd degree. And we're done. It's a recap of the underlying ideas. It's just the same uh, notions that I set up, just re uh, written down here. Feel free to pause and read the challenge problem. Feel free to try it and write down in the comments uh, your thoughts and solutions. Thank you so much.